Caution, this is an M-rated game, so the Magical Chicken insists that viewer discretion is advised. It's time for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim review for the Nintendo Switch. I remember when Skyrim was all the rage back when it was first released in 2011. Six years later, I'm playing it for the first time, and I can see why this game was so popular. So let's get into the details. I've never played any prior Elder Scrolls game before, so I have no background about the lore, the land, the stories, and whatnot. The beginning of the game allows you to choose your race and physical traits. It's cool how each race has their own unique passive and active skills and talents. This is a massive open world RPG. There is so much to do and explore, but the main storyline of the game is that early on you become aware that you are the next Dragonborn, a powerful being with the ability to capture Dragon Souls and use them to unlock secret powers. There's much more to this tale, but I won't spoil it for those of you like me who didn't play this on day one. Your character has a number of skill set trees. Every time you level up, you can choose to increase your health, stamina, or magicka, and you can learn or increase a specific ability amongst many different factions. Leveling up is different in this game as opposed to other RPGs in the sense that you don't gain experience points for kills or turning in quests. Instead, using specific weapons, casting spells, crafting items, picking locks, and sneaking around is the basis of leveling up. There's many more trees of how to level up, but I'm not going to list them all off. If you use a two-handed weapon often, your experience within that specific skill set will level up, which in turn increases your experience for your overall main level. I thought this was a fantastic way to level up. Instead of grinding your way up by killing a seemingly unending plethora of enemies, or turning in monotonous quests, using specific skills will do just the trick. This keeps the game fresh and interesting, because it's always fun to upgrade specific skill sets and obtain different combinations. Not sure if it's possible, but it seems plausible that you could reach level 100 just by picking locks and crafting weapons. But where's the fun in that? Fighting enemies is the real entertainment, but it can also be a daunting task. Some enemies will really test your skills, and it can be easy to die. This is why you need to save your game frequently. There is an autosave feature, but it doesn't autosave enough, and sometimes you'll be at the very end of a quest and oops, you died, and now you have to start at the beginning. This happened to me more times than I'd like to admit, so take it from me and save your game. However, do not save your game right before you die, because guess what? As soon as you load it back up, you're dead. When you performed a death blow or a kill shot, the camera angle would change and time would slow down for a cool little cinematic, a nice touch to show off your superior battle skills. The graphics look great for a game that was made, at the time of this video, seven years ago for last-gen consoles. Now I don't know if it's because it's the Switch version, but there are many graphical pop-ins everywhere. I thought it was interesting how detailed you could get with your character's physical features, seeing how you'll hardly ever see his or her face again. Even when I was able to, I usually had this mask on anyway, so... yeah. Now there are quite a few glitches that I found. They didn't hinder my progress, but it does remove the level of immersiveness the game tries to earn. I also thought the physics were a bit off, like when riding a horse up a mountainside. Yeah. Or like this right here. I believe I can fly. The controls are pretty much perfect. Much of the time you'll be selecting items and spells from your quick select menu, which is a very welcome feature. The motion controls are fun to use, but most of the time I preferred the pro controller. The map is fairly huge, even by today's standards. It's nice that you can fast travel to a location, however you won't be able to if you're burned down by too many things to carry. I thought it was hilarious how you could eat food from your pack, which would lighten your carrying load, yes, but it technically wouldn't make your whole self lighter. But whatever, as long as I can get to where I need to go. Here's a trick though, if you're carrying too much to run, you can perform power attacks to move in little bursts. There are tons of quests and things to do. I thought it was cool how you could even start a family by buying a house and adopting a child. I like the attention to detail in the NPC's character traits and personalities. You can hire mercenaries or have companions with you to help fight by your side, and what's even better, they usually weren't completely useless. They would actually deal severe damage and get many kills for you. The downside is you have to make sure they don't die, because they will not come back. This was another interesting feature. If a certain NPC dies, the game will inform you with a letter from a postal carrier. It's rather sad too. I didn't like how battle buddies wouldn't follow you to certain places, and their IQ level seemed a bit low when it came to avoiding traps. The voice acting was fantastic, however I noticed the audio mixing wasn't exactly correct in some areas, like these. 
Oh well, must have run off. This version of Skyrim has all the DLC from the original. Dragonborn, Hearthfire, and Dawnguard are all here, which is awesome. This game supports amiibo play. If you're lucky, you can find a certain hero's items which is quite fun, however they aren't actually that great as far as ratings go. Still, gotta love crossovers. One thing I wish Skyrim had was multiplayer. I think it would have been awesome to quest with a friend. It would have made the game even better. But overall, Skyrim on Switch is a great experience. With all the DLC, motion controls, and amiibo support added, if you've never played Skyrim before, the Switch edition is a great choice. This game gets a 4.5 out of 5 with the title of Epic.